Hi, everyone. I am a huge fan of Pinky Patel. If you have a follower on Instagram, and I just wanted to say, hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel. I don't know if you know who she is. Anyway, I digress. Welcome back to the Magnetic Marketing and Mindset Show. It's Tracy Ponterelli, Coach Tracy. I am here to talk to you about a better way to measure your success. So as I record this, I was just finishing a amazing month in my business. It was one of our best months ever. I think the second to our November month, which was Black Friday, which was insane. And I mean, we knocked it out of the park. My team's amazing. And I woke up uh, in the first of the month and, you know, kind of reflecting back. And I had one customer order that went a little awry. And I woke up thinking about that one order that didn't go as planned. Out of all of the business that we did, I was focused on the one thing that didn't go right. And I remember thinking, it's so wild how our brain focuses in on the things that did not happen. And it's what's called negativity bias, our brain is wired to figure out what's wrong instead of really celebrating what's right. And I've been reading a book. It's called The Gap in the Gain. It's by Dan Sullivan and Benjamin Hardy. And um, you may have heard me talk about the book, Who Not How, in a previous episode. I love these books. The Gap in the Gain is my jam because it talks about how to get out of a scarcity mindset and get into an abundant mindset. And so many of you, if you are listening to this podcast, odds are you are a high achiever, you're a striver, you're someone who sets goals and tries to crush them on a regular basis. And sometimes for people like us, it's really hard to stop and celebrate our wins. And really, that's the whole point is how far we've come and how much we've accomplished. And so I want to talk to you about a couple of exercises you can do to rethink how much you've accomplished. But first, I want to talk to you about goal setting in the future and how important it is, but how it can be misleading. Okay. So, um, the way that the authors describe this kind of ideal scenario of the future, right? Like when we set like our ideal goal of exactly what we'd want things to look like in the future, there's a problem with the ideal because the ideal is not real. It's an illusion right? It's, it's a spot in the future to, to move towards, but it's not a very specific destination. And for any of you who've actually hit the goal that you want, when you hit the goal, you're automatically thinking about the next goal, right? So the goal isn't the end destination. It's just like a stop along the way. So they describe the ideal like a horizon. So imagine with me, you're looking out on the ocean, and you see where the sun meets the water, right? It's that line of the horizon. Now the horizon isn't an actual spot. It's just a visual cue for you to measure kind of the space in the future. A more accurate measure is to turn around and look behind you at how far you've come. So that's what I wanna to talk to you about today. One of the exercises in the book is to look back 10 years, go back 10 years and write down all of the things you've accomplished in the past 10 years. So I did this and it was very fun because 10 years ago, I had three little kids. <laughs> I was a stay-at-home mom and I was doing a ton of great stuff. I was volunteering. I was the head of the parents association. I was doing a lot of fundraising. I was the girl scout troop leader. 
I was around for so much of the kids stuff. I was playing an important role as a young mom. I had no career. I had stopped working in marketing and public relations. I was kind of in between. I had no career and I had no idea what and if I would do anything next. I mean, I kind of knew I wanted to do something, but I had no idea what it would be. So in the past 10 years, I became a personal trainer. I became a wellness coach. I taught at some of the top gyms here in Manhattan. I became a run coach and an ambassador for Lululemon. I ran their run club. I ran two marathons. I don't even know how many half marathons, lots of races in Central Park. Um, I started a wellness business. I started another wellness business. <clears throat> I started a Facebook group for my friends that has now grown to over 5,000 people. I have a weekly email that goes out with wellness news. I am now making more in my online wellness business than I ever would have imagined making in my personal training or wellness business. None of that had transpired in the past 10 years. So am I going to focus on that or am I going to focus on the one order that didn't go through at the end of the month? So this is an amazing practice. What I want to ask you to do, and I'd love if you reached out to me on social media and told me what you discovered about yourself that you have done in the last 10 years that you forgot about. My husband and I have traveled the world. Uh, it's really, we've had these amazing memories with our families. It's been extraordinary what we've been able to do in the past 10 years. And I hope you can hear the smile on my face as I record this podcast, because it really is such a great exercise. Focus on the gains. So the way you measure your success is by looking behind you, not at what you did or did not achieve most recently. Okay. That's merely your um, horizon. What's in front of you, right? Of course, you're going to go to work. You're going to set your goals. You're going to go to work for them. Okay. I'm saying when you measure your success, measure, sorry, Mabel just heard a noise, <laughs> measure your success by how far behind you go. So this was interesting. And I'm going to read this to you guys. Um, the problem is how you measure. I'm going to read this from the gap in the game. Do you find that no matter how much success you have, you're perpetually distract, dissatisfied with your progress? Does it feel like you're still far from achieving your biggest goals? The problem is not in the quantity or quality of your success and achievements. The problem is how you measure. Okay, so this was really fun. So they talk about the stages of, um, the, it's called the conscious competence learning model. I found this absolutely fascinating. So any of you moms that are out there listening, you'll know when you potty trained your kids, this will sound super, super familiar, <laughs> or you learn to ride a bike, right? Any of those like skills that now you're like, whatever, I like know how to do that. I don't even have to think about it anymore. That's what happens to us over and over again. And it's why we forget how much we've learned how to do. Okay. So the first step in any kind of conscious learning model, it's called unconscious incompetency, right? You don't know. You don't know. You don't even know that you need, that would be a skill. So just imagine you're a baby. You don't know that potty training is even a thing, right? So, um, unconscious incompetency is blissful ignorance. You have no idea, right? Then one day you figure out that this is a skill you need to learn, but you still know you don't know how to do it. That's called conscious incompetency, right? Now, you know, that you need to learn it, but you know, you don't know how to do it. Right. So you start to build the skill, right. And as you're building the skill and you learn it, that becomes conscious competency. So you're learning it. You're proud of yourself. Any of you have learned a new skill, you know, it's a great skill to learn, right. You le learn your new thing and you consciously learn. It gets exciting. And then you build it in and it becomes habit. And it just becomes like part of who you are. You move on to the next goal that becomes unconscious competency. So now you're not even giving yourself credit for what you've accomplished because your brain just is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We already know how to do that. It moves on to the next thing. So what I'm asking you to do is stop and acknowledge all of your unconscious competencies. There are many. 
you are doing an amazing job. My friend, you've made it this far. You've made it through so many things. You've learned how to navigate so many difficult challenges. You've accomplished so many great things. I want you to stop and think about those things and keep this list. So one of my favorite tips that they say in, in the book, and I do this every day with my girlfriend, Emily, who may be listening on here. We have something that we call the daily Trinity. We leave ourselves each other a message each day um, on Voxer, if anybody's used Voxer. And we tell each other three things that we've done that we're proud of. We also say three things we're grateful for and we say three things that we desire. So we put our, super, our goals out there, things that we're wishing for. But celebrating and writing down your three wins each day locks in your memory. And if you write them down, you can go back and look. If you started today and you just wrote three things at the end of every day that you did that you were proud of, that were three wins, by the end of the year, you could look back on all of the amazing things you accomplished this year. And wouldn't that be better than focusing on the one thing that you didn't? I hope this was helpful, my friends. Please go into podcasts if you are finding this content helpful, useful. I try to do it in little bite-sized pieces so that you can take this um, knowledge, wisdom, tips, ideas on the run, put them into your life, make them work for you, make your business work a little bit better, make you feel a little bit more uh, in, in a in, little bit more congruent and excited about what you're doing, because when you're excited and you feel good, that is a magnet for possibility and opportunity. So go out there, be a positive magnet, celebrate your wins. I believe in you. You're amazing. And I hope you have an amazing day. Okay. See you next time.